Hey there, podcast, and welcome back to another episode of the Nourish Life Show. So today we're jumping in with a quick words of wisdom episode, and I want to speak to you. I want to speak to your past. The reason being is I'm constantly getting feedback from these shows, which is to do with finding my strengths, finding your areas of genius, finding your superpowers that you really want to commit to, build on, and go all in on. Now, the fun thing is, with a lot of this personal personal development stuff, the personal inquisition, personal questioning, personal awareness work, it doesn't, it speaks broadly. The questions speak to you in a broad manner. They speak to you in a way which you don't really find true answers. And the beauty of this show, and I think this is, I don't think, I, this is genuinely why I believe this show has done so well. We speak to the parts of people where the answers truly lie. And this is the whole purpose of today's podcast. Now, Steve Jobs has an amazing quote, which is, you can only connect the dots looking backwards. You can't connect them looking forwards. And there's so much truth in that because the, the future hasn't happened. We don't know. There is, it is the complete unknown. We are uncertain about what's going to happen in the future. But we have lived the past. We have factual evidence of the past. We've lived it and we know it's true because we've been there. <laughs> it's part of our story. And when we really think about it, history, so again, history, when you break that word down, is his story. Our history is our story. So my questions which I want to ask to you today, which will hopefully shed some light on parts of you which you might have forgot, you might have covered up, you might have once expressed it, but then heard some people's opinions or judgments or allowed the criticism to get to you and then decided to cover them up because I know I did that in my past. But these are just three questions which will speak to your past. They'll speak to a part of you where the true factual evidence lies and that you know to be true. So question number one for finding, really finding your genius, really finding your natural gifts and superpower is this. What was your nickname at school? So when you were a child or when you were young, it doesn't have to be at school, what was your nickname? Did you have a nickname? Were you renowned for something? Did people see a quality in you and nickname you? Now, some people had a nickname, some people didn't. For me, I didn't have a nickname in school. People call me Sai, still call me Sai. But in the athlete field, people call me crazy man. <laughs> so um, a lot of people don't know this about me. I actually got to a very high level playing squash um, as well as being a gymnast. I had two nicknames that carried over into those sports, which were crazy man. <laughs> I was renowned for just doing stuff. Like if I saw something, I would do it. I didn't need to be told how to do it. I would just try. I was the person that would just take action. Um, I'd jump in. It, the, the qualities that carry over with that are fearless, bold, courageous, but also it'll highlight weaknesses, which was I didn't think of the consequences as well. So the fun thing is with a nickname, it'll show you things that people saw in you. And also it'll give you the values, but it can also highlight weaknesses as well. So things that you kind of can be aware of. So question number one there was, what was your nickname at school? If you were more of an introverted person and people called you a bookworm, then was that your area of genius? You had an amazing power, a natural gift of learning, growing, a thirst for knowledge. Maybe that's something that you've stopped doing in later life. You forgot that you, as a child, loved to learn. So that's question number one. What was your nickname at school? What did people know you for? Now, some people had a nickname, some people didn't. So the second part of this question is, what did people come to you for at school? So did people come to you for help? Did your child friends come to you for something at school? Did they need help with their homework? Did they come to you and speak to you when they needed help? Did they come to you and get, like speak secrets? What were things or what were certain attributes that people used to come to you for as a child? Because when you were pure, <laughs> people came to you because it was your natural thing. It was what you were putting out in the world for. And people usually come to you with those things. So again, we've got what was your nickname at school? Question number one. And then question number two, what were the things that people used to come to you for at school? So for me, if I've reflected my own story, my entrepreneurial gift shone here as this was the point in, in my life where I realized the, the tuck shop was expensive. I could go to Asda, which was a local supermarket in England. I could bulk buy sweets and stuff like that. And I could sell them. I could undercut, undercut the, the canteen at school 
and make money. <laughs> so for me, my entrepreneurial trait was highlighted there as a child. But the same thing could be here for you. Were you a person who could bring people together? Were you known as a connector in school? Were you known as a safe person to speak to at school? Were you the person that people went to for help at school? So maybe there's certain attributes, strengths, points there which you can look back on and reflect on and go, do you know what? I was actually a really good connector at school. I, I love bringing people together. I loved helping people. I was that person. So, so far, those two questions are, what was your nickname at school and what did people come to you at school? Really dig down into those. What were the things about you which shone, which people saw? And then I really want to ask you the question, have you hidden any of those? So were you the person that maybe used to love singing in school, but then maybe once you, you sang somewhere, someone said something and you, you hid that area up, but it was something that you loved to do. And then question number three, <laughs> this is always a fun one. What did you get shouted for the most at school? So for me, believe it or not, mine was speaking. <laughs> I was always getting into trouble um, for not shutting up. I was disruptive. <laughs> so that obviously has thrown itself forward into future life. And now it's one of my biggest strengths is it's my career. It's my job. It's something I absolutely love doing. And it's the reason you're hearing this message today. I used to get trouble into trouble for the thing that has given me what all that it's given today. So to you, what was the things that you used to get into trouble for the most at school? Now, the reason this is such a powerful question is at school, school might not have interested you, but things, your purpose, things that excited you may have, and they may have been the things that you got shouted at for, or maybe not in school. It could have been from family. It could have been from friends or stuff along the lines of that. Were you always going on adventures and getting into trouble for not coming back on time because you were too busy on adventures as a child or exploring and things along the lines of that. So those three questions are really powerful for the simple reason that they shine light on the past. They shine light on areas where you have evidence, you have facts, you have lived. They really help you find and be very clear on the things that you were naturally good at before you maybe let, let the world in and lost confidence or stopped exposing yourself in those areas. So again, what was your nickname in school? Or what was your nickname as a child? What did people come to you for as a child? What were you good at that people saw in you? Or what was a skill that you did as a child? And then also, what did you get shouted at for? <laughs> Those three things, as well as hopefully should bring a huge smile to your face, will also help you reflect onto things that you know to be true. Um, so usually when I do this with people is it really kind of creates a lot of light bulb moments and a lot of the feedback is, holy shit, I totally forgot about that part of myself. Um, so hopefully that's happened to you today. Hopefully this has been a little short episode, which has hopefully shone quite a lot of light. As always, I'd love to know if these, this episode has helped you. Um, so as always, if you can just simply take a screenshot, let us know what you took away from the show. Let us know if this has been of help to you. Let us really know if this has uncovered something. I would love to know. And as always, my DM box is always open, so feel free to reach out. But anyway, as always, go and live the Nourish Life and ask these questions. Get busy connecting those dots. The past has an amazing way of showing you the steps or the pieces of gold that land, which you can really excel on and push into the future. Ready to break the mold? Learn more about leading a Nourish life by visiting the Nourish Group and Simon Hall on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Take a screenshot, tag in at Simon Hall BC, and let us know you're listening on socials.